Amy, I would ask you what your reaction was. In what world does this happen to a team where a quarterback basically gives his head coach the middle finger? In what world? When your head coach is Dennis Allen. Susie, um, I'm speaking from experience. As you know, I overlapped with Dennis Allen in Oakland for one year. And everything I observed during that year is such that when that play happened, I wasn't the least bit surprised. Now, if it happened to any other coach, I would have been surprised. It happened and Dennis was a coach. I was not the least bit surprised. Uh, shortly after Dennis was hired by the Saints, I was asked about him, about his coaching, his leadership on CBS Sports, on that other pregame show, CBS Sports Network. And I answered in the following manner because now I have an addition to that answer. I shared my views of Dennis's leadership, and I use that word in quotes, while he was with the Raiders. And I quickly noted that, look, we can all learn on the job. We can grow on the job. We can improve on the job. I not only grew on my job, I grew up on the job. I grew up on the job. I learned. I made mistakes. And I said, Dennis can do that as well. And what that play made clear to me is he has not changed his leadership style. Um, so was I surprised that that happened? I may have been one of the only people who was not surprised that happened. Okay, so what do you know that we don't know? Well, I observed him for a year. I don't know if it was 12 months, but it was obviously for a full season uh, in Oakland. Day one, he, he's hired calls a staff meeting or asks that a staff meeting be called of every single person in the organization. And everyone was so excited. And every single department, coaching, trainers, equipment, tickets, I made sure every business department was there. The auditorium was packed. And he got up and he was really rude. Um, not only didn't he demonstrate leadership to enthuse the staff and to excite the staff and to lead the staff. Um, he was demeaning. He was derisive. And people walked out of that room just stunned. Can you give some specifics? Because now I'm fascinated to know what it was that was so rude or. You know, I'm, I'm sorry that I don't have any specific quotes. It was quite a while sure. ago. But my overall impression, and, and by the way, after that meeting, there was a line, and I don't mean literally a line, but people flooding into my office from the finance department and the, um, the video department and the legal department just looking at me like, what was that? And again, I'm not here. Well, I'm here. I'm right next to you. But my point is not to belabor the past, but I gave him every benefit of the doubt that he would learn and grow from what happened in Oakland. Just like, as I said, I learned on the job. I grew on the job. I made mistakes on the job. I like to believe I improved on the job. I gave him the same benefit of the doubt that he could go to new Orleans and learn from what went wrong in Oakland, where the locker room, um, you know, there's that expression. He lost the locker room. I don't know that he ever had the locker room to lose it, but what that, what I saw in that game when Jameis indicated that, yes, he knew the team was instructed to take a knee in a victory formation, but the team decided not to do that, that told me everything I needed to know. Check out new episodes of What the Football with Susie Schuster and Amy Trask every Tuesday. Watch us on the Rich Eisen Show YouTube page or follow and listen wherever you get your podcasts.